President Muhammadu Buhari recently wrote to the Senate and House of Assembly declining assent to the Electoral Bill 2018. Mm. The president says his refusal was due to some drafting issues that remained unaddressed following the prior revision to the bill. The House of Representatives says it is saddened and concerned that President Buhari declined assent to the amended 2010 Electoral Act. It expresses fears over the continued absence of a legislative framework, especially as the delay in the passage is already eating into the six-month window provided by law for amendment to the law. Yes, indeed. And House spokesman Abdurazak Namdaz says the advantages uh, to be derived from the amendment far outweigh whatever discrepancy might have been noticed. I wish the president had signed the Electoral Act because in 2015, we won an election uh, using the card readers. It really helped us. People could no longer use the normal ways of uh, stuffing ballots and, and rigging the elections anyhow. However, when it came to the courts, they ruled that it was not provided for in the Electoral Act. Now, this time around, we have provided in the Electoral Act and we are going into an election. But now that it has not been signed, uh, we will look at the reasons advanced by the president. Uh, we will always work on it to ensure that uh, he gets back the electoral act so that he can ascend to it. My only fear is that time is no longer our frame. Uh, the constitution stipulates that when you are six months to next election, you cannot amend the electoral act. So this is just our fear. Mm -hmm. Abdurazak Namdas there mm -hmm. trying to explain uh, how things could be. We have joining us a uh, constitutional lawyer, Olari Waju Ajanoku, in the studio this morning. Good morning, Olari Waju. Good morning. Right. First of all, let me ask, the, the, the issue of back and forth between the, the president and the, the presidency or the executive and the legislature on this amendment bill, the timing, does the timing of this whole electoral bill, which is getting close to elections, does it have any impact on the apprehension or the dissatisfaction or the suspicion from any quarters? Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you. Well, um, anyone who is dissatisfied now <clears throat> um, with the uh, process of amendments and uh, what is being sought to be done mm. will be well-funded. That uh, fear will be well-funded because um, now, if you saw that what was done in 2015 wasn't too good, the moment the legislature started sitting quite well, the act ought to have been one of the things that they would have uh, brought off an amendment. Now, <clears throat> it's so crucial and so close to election. INEC has, as far back as uh, February 2018, given us dates as to when they intend to conduct elections. February 16 or so, and then March, March 2nd. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment that was announced, and um, having made preparations into, uh, uh, towards the uh, conducting uh, of uh, the elections that they have proposed, the legislature brought up an idea, which they actually actualized by amending and sending it to the president to assent to, which he refused to do. Now, <clears throat> you will begin to look at it. Why are you having fears in respect of the amendment to the Electoral Act? One. Who one is, is having fears now? Now I mean, Is it, it on the part of the executive, executive or now, the legislature? Executive. Okay. Ed, executive. Mm. Some, some of the legislatures too are apprehensive. Mm -hmm. One, the executive will look at it. All that we are looking at is purely what they can get from it. It's purely politics, not for the entire interest of the uh, electorate. Now, the president refused, saying that, well, INEC has uh, um, uh, invested so much money, so much uh, uh, personnel into ensuring that data, uh, things are prepared that for the election for two, mm, actually so February 2019. Yeah. Now, that they are the, it is now the executive that are now telling the legislature that, look, INEC is saying 
that, look, it will cost us so much to do this again. It will disrupt logistics that we are already put in place to do the election in February 2016 and 2019. Then the executive is also apprehensive on this other side to say, look, if you bring in national assembly election, state houses of assembly election, and the governor's election in a day, yeah. one day, they are looking at it that this is politics. Once majority of the people in the assembly, the national and state houses of assembly come in under a particular platform, whether and in any of the parties, mm -hmm. then there is tendency that that's, uh, 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 it will be a, a, a positive and high progression towards that same kind of party or parties winning the presidential the election. The bandwagon going to affect you, man. That's the way it in is. In other words, both sides, whether it is the legislature or, or the, the executive, yes. are looking at this from their own, their, their political interest, not necessarily that this will aid the electoral process. That's the way I see it. And help our democracy. That's the way I see it. And that's okay. the way majority of people see it. So what do you think really um, are the uh, implications for the, the 2019 election? Because... Uh, what the legislature is saying is it, there's no legislative uh, framework for the election to actually hold. I, I'm, and I'm wondering, I mean, is that uh, a pre-varication uh, or is that uh, a statement of fact? Um, it is not a statement. It is not a true statement and it is not a statement of fact. Okay. Now, um, it, we ha it, it was like the senator said on air now yes. that... Mm -hmm. um, because of the judgment of the Supreme Court in a particular suit, mm -hmm. that they have been trying to ensure that the card reader is actually placed in the act so that any election, in fact, they amended. Yeah, the card reader is not the only issue. It's here, not, it's not the it's only a issue. Major, it's a major thing. What, what some um, critics of the president who has refused to, mm. uh, you know, uh, um, uh, sign this bill, what they're saying is look, you're a beneficiary of the card reader. It, in 2015. Yes. Why are you afraid for that to be used now? They are narrowing it down to the issue of the card reader. No, even, even if the card reader is left, is agreed on, you understand? And, but they are the one major thing that they are really looking at is the reordering of the election. Mm -hmm. That's what INEC is As saying. The sequence of the, the election. sequence, yes. Mm. That, That's one of the most contentious. That of is all the it. Issues. That is actually the main, the main reason why all of them are antagonizing and uh, bringing it up to say, look, let us do this. The other one is saying, no, we are not going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. They want the presidential election to come first. Yeah. So once the ele presidential election comes first, whatever comes out from that place will determine what will come out from the other elections, the ele whether yeah, National yeah. Assembly, State House, and all that. You know, understand? But Look, the agitation is really rife that, look, we need to amend this. Fine, the card reader system ought to be there, as uh, uh, pronounced by the, uh, the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court, that, mm -hmm. look, but then, if you don't have the provision of the card reader, and election is done with the card reader, and eventually certain parts are also conducted manually, mm. will you, there will be something substantial, if there is no, uh, uh, there is a substantial compliance with the Electoral Act, Whatever happens thereafter will not be taken into recognition. The, the, even the Supreme Court will not take cognizance that that little part, how, how has it affected the, the outcome the, of the election? Of the election. Mm -hmm. You understand? If it is minimal, they will, they will just keep it aside and it will be as if the status quo has been maintained. Mm -hmm. And that is what they are also calling for. The executive is saying, let us maintain it. Perhaps this is one, one of the reasons why we say the, the legislature should be proactive. They should be active in, 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 you know, in, 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 in their actions. They've been there for this while. They've been docile in respect of this amendment of the act, so of this electoral act. they didn't get the timing right? Is that what they didn't saying? get it right. Mm. If they had proposed it from the beginning, they would yeah. have resolved this it, issue. Th that was why I was asking, is the timing the is timing something is wrong not with right the timing now. and all of that? You are unnecessarily hitting up the polity. Mm. So what do you want? You are calling, don't let me say dog a bad name, no. but. Why would you want everyone to see that indeed the executive is the one that should be held responsible if anything goes wrong at the end of the day? You have your plans. They have their plans. This is politics. You are vying for certain positions. They are also vying for perhaps the same position that you are vying for. So they are trying to in a way the scale. What will what will the executive do that will tilt the uh, 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 tilt the same in their favor? Yes, in the outcome. The outcome in their favor. Mm. 
The other opportunity is we also be thinking the same way. What do we do? Do we allow what it is to stand, or we upturn it, or bring up confusion, or anything, just to ensure that the status quo does not remain the same? All right. When this issue came up first, the, the first time it came up and became a controversy, I mean the sequence of the election, yes. uh, they had to go to court to find out whether INEC had the right, or sorry, whether the National Assembly had the right to, uh, you know, to amend the, the Electoral Act or not. Or even to reorder the, or to sequence, reorder of the, the sequence of the, the, uh, the election, court had given the, a court of appeal actually said the, the National Assembly does have the right to reorder the sequence of the election. It's on appeal. Oh, well. Well, they have, constitutionally, they have the right to amend laws mm. made by them. Whether even portions of the um, Constitution, they also have rights to mm -hmm. amend same. Mm. But the timing, this is, this is politics for goodness sake. Mm. You bring it up, I'll find a means of thwarting the efforts at ensuring that the timetable is reordered, that the sequence is changed. You understand? You come up, I'll find means. That is why they say so, sometimes so, yeah. lawyers do aid in doing all these things. We should be blamed too because we we'll delay the courts or bring up the process that would delay the process of adjudicating on the matter mm -hmm. when it is too close. By the time it's now too late, six months of the time you say we can't do anything can't again. Do anything and anymore. the court hands off. Mm. That's why we ought to also be blamed for mm. some but, of these but, things. But since it's still on appeal, yes. it, it, at that level, considering it from that window, is it that the National Assembly cannot go ahead with the veto they were trying to consider at first? Mm -hmm. you know, it will be... Um, uh, you prejudice the outcome of, of, the the court. of the court. So you must wait first for the court to give its judgment. Once that is done, if you are that dissatisfied, whether it's for or against, you go to the Supreme Court. Mind you, by the time they get to the Supreme Court, like I said, everyone will want to employ this delay tactics to ensure that that thing is not had before six months. Unless you also alter that provision that says six months before the time. Mm -hmm. uh, without that, be rest assured that this one might not fly this time around. Okay, well, it seems that this, is, this whole um, electoral uh, bill thing is uh, somewhat of a distraction. Should we just throw it out? Or is there hope? I mean, Itainang, the, the presidential <laughs> uh, <laughs> and liaison between the executive and, uh, you know, the, the legislature has said that the National Assembly has the, uh, you know, uh, prerogative Prerogative. to uh, bring it before the president again. Mm. You remember the first one was thrown out yes you know by the president he rejected I, it I'm, and then the second one it, it looks like um the president doesn't even want anything to do with the electoral you bill bring it now with. i mean the president bring okay. it to me i'll refuse to do it i have a time limit within which to assent to it if mm -hmm. i don't do it but i'll wait for it but i'll wait for the time to doesn't expand it amount to throwing away the baby with the bathwater it, Take the card reader, for example, which yes. the Supreme Court has said, yeah, truly, it, it, you know, the, the card reader and other electronic devices mm. will actually enhance the transparency, uh, you know, uh, of the electoral system. And, yeah. uh, I agree with yeah. you. I agree with you in total. They have even, in, in the amendment they made, um, they said <clears throat> if card readers might function at any point in time, mm -hmm. elections must be conducted in those areas where the card readers might function within 24 hours. Fine. This mm. is good. But then, just because of the peculiar interest that these people have, mm. on both sides, on both mm. sides, they will not because it's also work. the part of the of the amendment talking about any electoral uh, officer or uh, yeah re uh, officer that is elected, he should declare whether he is a card carrying member no, or, or a member not, of a political party, which is which is novel, which mm. is not, that's nice. But then, just because of the timing, the timing is wrong. Mm. No one, the executive will not want it to work now, and um, the legislature will try its best to ensure it works. That's it. Um, the veto or bring up the, uh, the bill into full, full, um, fruition. Mm -hmm. But then, will that be done within six months? But would it have made more sense if the National Assembly had thought it through? Very well. Yes. To actually pick some of these items one by one and you know come up with laws to. Uh, to back it up, say the card reader, for example, times, uh, take the uh, you know, it's other, a holistic, other issues. It's a, it's a holistic <laughs> approach to it, yeah. But then taking it in bits mm -hmm. wouldn't even go well, okay. You bring one now, perhaps bring up the card issue. Mm -hmm. No, they, I am sure the executive will toe the line, bring up the issue of card reader and all that, they will sign it before you bring up another one. 
and send it to them, you see the delay. Even this cardioidal issue will be delayed for some time. Mm. It's big. When um, dust is being raised on same, the, the, uh, the executive will sign and send it back. They'll bring up another one, they'll delay it. Mm. So all, you see, both of them, both sides. It's a no-win situation. No, no win. I mean, sh they should sit down, dialogue on same. Okay, what do we do now? for the overriding interest of the populace. Mm. What do we do? Well, you, you said earlier that uh, as far as you are concerned, this is not meant uh, for the interest of the people not necessarily. It's not about how, uh, what gives them an edge over, over the other. Brother, that's, that's the way it is. For okay, now. we have to leave you here now. Uh, Olara Waju, a constitutional lawyer, thank you for coming on. It's a pleasure being here.